Where shall I go from your spirit? Or where shall I flee from your presence? I say, surely the darkness shall cover me and the light about me be night. Even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is bright as the day. For darkness is as light with you. So open our lips, Lord, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. even the light that dispels the darkness. You are our love, even the love that sets us free to do right and good and justice and mercy. Lord, you are the source of all that is good we praise you, even now, with a word or phrase. Patient.
Oh God, how good it is to know that you are faithful. Faithful and true to yourself, your love, your mercy, your goodness. Faithful to forgive, not because we deserve it, but because it's in you to be merciful. And so, Father, we come deeply sorrowful for our sins, asking even that you would convict us of our sins, that we might confess them, that we might be reconciled to you. Privately, let's confess our sins. Seeing the crowds, Jesus went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Father, forgive us for who can say, I have made my heart pure, I am clean from my sin. We confess that our hearts are deceitful and desperately wicked. And we do not seek you. Have mercy on us for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. For our hope is in him alone. Amen. For those who truly are sorrowful in a way that leads to confession of sin. For those who put their hope and faith in Jesus Christ alone for the forgiveness of sin. Listen to this. From God himself. Come now. Let us reason together. Says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet. They shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson. They shall be like wool. Images of purity. Images of a complete transformation and identity. Let us reason together. He knew our skepticism. And he spoke into our cynicism. It's true, says the Lord. It's really true. You are absolved of your sins. By your grace, through faith in Jesus Christ, it is revealed. Amen. Let's be thankful.
the garment, stretching out the heavens like a tent. He lays the beams of his chambers on the waters. He makes the clouds his chariot. He rides on the wings of the wind. He makes his mess messengers wind, his ministers a flaming fire. He set the earth on its foundations so that it should never be moved. You covered it with the deep as with a garment. The waters stood above the mountains. At your rebuke, they fled. At the sound of your thunder, they took to flight. The mountains rose, the valleys sank down to the place that you appointed for them. You set a boundary that they may not pass so that they might not again cover the earth. You made springs gush forth from the valleys. They flow between the hills. They give drink to every beast of the field. The wild donkeys quench their thirst. Beside them, the birds of the heavens dwell. They sing among the branches. From your lofty abode, you water the mountains. The earth is satisfied with the fruit of your work. You cause the grass to grow for the livestock and plants for man to cultivate, that he may bring forth food from the earth and wine to gladden the heart of man, oil to make his face shine, and bread to strengthen man's heart. The trees of the Lord are watered abundantly, the cedars of Lebanon that he planted. In them the birds build their nests, the stork has her home in the fir trees. The high mountains are for the wild goats, the rocks are a refuge for the rock badgers. He made the moon to mark the seasons. The sun knows its time for setting. <coughs> you make the darkness, and it is night, when all the beasts of the forest creep about. The young lions roar for their prey, seeking their food from God. When the sun rises, they steal away and lie down in their dens. Man goes out about his work and to his labor until the evening. O oh Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Here is the sea, great and wide, which teems with creatures innumerable, living all things, both great and small. There go the ships to the Leviathan, which you formed to play in it. These all look to you to give them their food in due season. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are dismayed. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created and you, you renew the face of the ground. May the glory of the Lord endure forever, and may the Lord rejoice in his works, who looks on the earth as it trembles, who touches the mountains, and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have being. May the meditation be pleasing to him, for I rejoice in the Lord. Let sinners be con condemned from the earth, and let the wicked be no more. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and praise the Lord. This is the word of the Lord.
So it could be said that there is physics and there are, is metaphysics. Lofty words. There is that which we know and see and feel and experience. There is that which gives meaning and truth and love to what we experience. Now on the surface, this passage looks like metaphysics. It's just this incredible celebration and reflection on all the wonderful and beautiful things and stuff and movements and patterns that we know as, in a single word, life. The psalm is a celebration of life, of physics. I mean, look at the, the detail of just, it goes on and on and on. The reflection off the sea by the moon. This is someone who's sat out, perhaps on a boat. And if you've done that at night on a high moon, you know just how spectacular it is to see the reflection like a ray. And he's just marveling it on and on. It goes about how the animals and the ebb and the flow of life, it's life. It's the world teeming with life. And life abundant, everything about life that is abundant is here being celebrated. Clearly, this song wants to think about physics. More so, just life. And how much we, if we were to be honest, just love life. We love life. But really, this psalm is not about life. Well, yes, it is, but not directly. This psalm is really about the metaphysics of life. What do I mean? Did you notice how it began and how it ends and how it, or in the middle and then how it ends? It's really all about this one thing. Oh, Lord, how manifold, how, how enormously brilliant and beautiful and, and multiple is the works of your hands that we have just celebrated for in wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. It goes on to say in verse 27, everything, everything that's just been described and all these creatures, here's the punchline, the metaphysical punchline. They all look to you to give life. Think about what just happened. What would it mean to reject God? Wouldn't it be true that you've rejected life and everything you love about life? Everything. That's the point. It concludes by worshiping God in communion with him. There is an amazing message, and it's very simple. On the one hand, to reject God is not as some perversions of metaphysics will try to tell you, is to gain life. To reject God is to, in some metaphysical ways of thinking, is really to be set free, to live, right? Oh, but anecdotal history would tell you otherwise. But of course, that kind of revelation that comes from another world into ours, that can see our world 
from outside of our world, from the spiritual looking upon the physical, we see a different story. That everything we love, everything that makes us to flourish, it's all from God. To reject God is to reject life. Christ comes into the scene and remember what he said. The devil has come to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come to give you life and life more abundantly. Now how would that shape and change the way we live life? Would we live it in any way as if to escape God, to ignore God, to reject God? Would it be to live it in any other way except for to be comforted by God? Yes, even convicted by God. Because God, who is the giver of all good things, God, the giver of life itself, God, the source of life, the very essence of life, if to convict us of something like we call sin, well, he's only convicting us of that which is anti-life. That's what sin is now. Sin became anti-life. And it just goes on and on, this meditation. Righteousness becomes life. It's very profound. To reject God is to reject everything that we so much love about life. Amen. Gracious and loving Father, may your heavenly kingdom be established on earth and may it reign over our hearts by reconciling the nations to yourself and by producing in us the fruit of charity and justice and a holy love for you, our God, that we would be a harvest of righteousness when your son comes to fulfill his kingdom. For this, O Lord, we pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is seated above every power and dominion, and by the power of the most Holy Spirit of God, Lord, hear our prayer. For Nathan and Colleen. truth and reconciliation, love and justice, mercy and peace. Heal the church.
On the night in which Christ was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it. And having given thanks, he gave it to his disciples and he said, Take, eat. This is my body which was given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, the Lord took the cup and he gave it to his disciples. And he said, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, which is shed for many. Drink ye all of it. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Have these words become so familiar? Has the ritual become so routine that we have forgotten? That we have somehow become casual about the life that God gave us in the death of his son? Who took upon himself the death that was our curse for rejecting him, the source of life, that we might not die. Of course, we take this meal remembering and believing that that death was sufficient in the mystery of his union with the whole human race by his eternal humanity, absorbing human race and solidarity to himself that he might satisfy the curse of death. We know that because he was raised on the third day by God through the Holy Spirit. He was vindicated, yes, but more than that, it was a declaration. There is no more death, only life for those who put their hope and faith in Christ. And so this is a meal for those who come believing and putting their trust in him. And so Christians, I ask you, what do you believe? He was manifested in the flesh, vindicated by the spirit, seen by angels, proclaimed among the nations, believed on in the world and taken up in glory. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of the faith. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. You're welcome to come forward as you feel led to receive the Lord's communion.
Yeah. 